In society, the most common gas mixture is air. In our automobiles, we inject a controlled amount of fuel, which is another mixture, and combust these gases. The combustion products are another gas mixture. Some additional gas mixtures are listed here. In science, the only time a pure gas is used is to create an inert atmosphere to prevent other gases, usually oxygen, from interfering with the chemical reactions we are conducting. When using gases in chemical reaction, gas mixtures are common. Clearly, it is important to know how to calculate the properties of a system containing multiple gases. Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures states that the properties of individual gases in a mixture are proportional to their fraction in the gas, which gives the partial pressure of each gas. For a mixture of gases, the partial pressure of each gas obeys the ideal gas law, but with the number of moles of each gas. The total pressure is the sum of the partial pressures. So to determine the contribution of one gas to the total pressure, we are going to divide PA over P total. And that is equal to number of moles of A, R, T over V, divided by number of moles total, R, T over B. Here, RT and V cancel, and what we are left with is number of moles of A over the number of moles total. That ratio, NA over N total, is called the mole fraction of A and is given by the symbol chi. A. If no reaction is occurring, we can consider a mixture of gases as a single entity and work with the total number of moles of gas. However, if one gas in a mixture is reacting, we need to work with the partial pressure of that reactive gas. For example, air is 21% oxygen. Only oxygen is reactive during combustion. This is the composition of dry air. In addition, air contains moisture, but the amount of moisture is variable and depends on the location, temperature, and humidity. Dry air contains 78.1% nitrogen, 20.9% oxygen, 0.9% argon, and less than 0.1% other gases. This example asks you to predict whether the molecular mass of humid air is greater than or less than the molecular mass of dry air. Please pause this video, think about this question, and predict what happens to the molecular mass. We will actually be discussing this in class. Please remind me if I am in this section and don't bring it up. Also, please remind me to explain how this facilitates tropical storm formation in the tropics. Thanks. These are the temperature and pressure profiles of the atmosphere. The pressure profile is simpler and easier to explain. Pressure drops exponentially with increasing altitude. By 90 kilometers in altitude, the pressure has dropped to less than one one millionth of the sea level pressure. If you look closely at this profile, you will note that there are small bumps that correlate to the maxima and minima in the temperature profile. 
The temperature profile has several maxima and minima. Heating of the atmosphere is due solely to absorption of solar radiation. The stratosphere is where the ozone layer exists, which absorbs ultraviolet radiation. The thermosphere absorbs x-rays emitted from the sun. The ionosphere, which is not shown, but extends up to 300 kilometers in at altitude, is the outermost portion of the atmosphere and is where high energy particles from the sun interact and create a region of high energy ionized gas.